He's saying that the elites are trying to control us. By making us wear masks. When you make someone wear masks, you dehumanize them. You remove their identity. The same way the men in the Middle East control their women by making them wear niqabs and dehumanize them. I looked at the comment section expecting the Muslims to back it. Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. Muslims saying, commentate W. Or the Muslims, you know what they're saying? I agree and I'm a Muslim. Niqab is cultural. It is not from my religion. A'udhu Billah. The wives of the Prophet, your mothers, wore the niqab. All of them. Every single one of them. And when a sister wears a niqab, it means she is trying to get to that status. She's taking the wives of the Prophet ﷺ as her example. And you should respect her. And you should defend her. And you should defend the honor of the Prophet ﷺ as well. Instead, you're siding with a kafir against the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. So it's very dangerous territory. So I was like, you know what, I have to make this video. What are you saying, people? We're in Turkey right now. Tabaharra, and I'm with my mom. She's doing some jilbab shopping. And I was like, you know what? Since I'm going to be waiting around today loads, or my mom's going to be floating around looking at different hijabs and jilbabs and what have you, I got this earphones set up. I have AirPods, man. But the uh, quality of the audio on is absolutely trash. Andrew Tate, if you don't know, probably do know, like if you're 18 to 25, even my mom is like, ah, man, Raja the Salah. The bald man, he managed to make his way on every single person's for you page. Polarizing, he has some really strong opinions. Kickboxer, multi-millionaire. You know, he speaks his mind on things and he doesn't care. A lot of the youth, they see that as success momentarily. But when you ask them, why are we here? They know the answer. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our goal here is not to procreate, get gal, make a lot of money. Our goal here is la ilaha illallah, Muhammad rasulullah. So when you say that to them, you kind of step out of that dream that you're in. The sakra that you're in, that question itself is a wake up call. It gets you thinking, it's like, yeah, so why do I look up to someone like that? I should be looking up to someone who is going to get me closer to my goal, which is genital for those in the end of the day. And in terms of making wealth, the Prophet wasn't a wealthy man. Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, Inna lakunna nanduru ya hiyali thumma hiyal thalath ya hiyalatin fi shahrayni wa ma ugdat fi abiyati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anara. Two months and fire was not lit in the house of the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, What did you have? What did you consume? What did you what how did you survive? He said Al Aswadan, the two blacks. That's what they had. Why are the two blacks at Tamar wal Ma? Umar narrates he says he walked in on the Prophet. I walked in on the Prophet ﷺ and he is laid on straw between him and the straw is nothing. And his pillow was of leather stuffed with dried vegetation. And he sees the straws make an imprint on his body on the side of his body and he begins to cry and the Prophet Sallallahu asks him Kik, what's making you cry? He goes Kisra and Qaysar fima huma fihi wa anta Rasulullah He goes Ama talba an takuna lahum dunya wa lana al-akhirah Is it not suffice that for them is this life? Is it not suffice that for them is this life and for us is the hereafter? They can have it. We have the hereafter. Sallallahu alayhi wa In another narration, he walks in on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says nothing is catching his eye only except three pieces of leather that are hung and he goes Ya Rasulullah the dunya was given to Faris al Rum. And they don't even worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is there any doubt in your mind? These are people that Allah has hastened their pleasures in this life. So this is an important concept. It's something that people really need to drill in their heads. Money is not the ghaya, it's the wasila, it's not the goal. You use it like you use the toilets, like Shaykh Hussain Tainah says. I'm not saying don't go get paper, don't get stacks, don't make bread. No, do that. But be like Abdurrahman ibn Awf when he migrated from Mecca to Medina and they were dividing the wealth on Ansar with the Muhajirin. And Abdurrahman ibn Awf was like, keep that. May Allah bring barakah and blessings on what you have. Dullani ala suq al Medina. Let me know where the market is. And he goes and he does as a multi-millionaire from nothing, from scratch, self-made. But these are the same people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes as men in the Quran. Because this is our whole thing. It's about masculinity, it's about making money, it's about being successful. These are the men Allah says These are men that business and trade does not distract them from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala They're not arrogant because they've scammed a few people out of their money They're not arrogant because they have some webcam gout And they're making money from Zina websites And when arrogance is derived from material goods it is a seat for disbelief. Man of the garden in Surah Al-Kahf. What does he say? I do not think that my garden is ever going to go away and I don't even think that hour is going to come. It was a seed of disbelief, arrogance from material goods, so it's very dangerous. And SubhanAllah, the scales have tipped. It does not matter how he makes his money, it does not matter how much he hoarders. He 
he is rich. What color is your Bugatti? I'm 100% sure I'm gonna get that in the comment section as a way of someone being serious or joking. The scales have tipped. Before it was how generous were you? That's the thing that's gonna elevate your status between the people. Now it's how much you can hoard there, how much you can keep for yourself, how much you can scam. It doesn't matter how you make it. What elevates people is how much you give, how much you serve the people. That is Sayyidul Qawm. Sayyidul Qawm Ya Khadimum. The person who looks after the people is, you know, he's their leader. But that's how far gone. We are Khalid bin Walid radiallahu and of course you know that he was the sword of Allah. He broke nine swords in the battle of Mota. He goes, and the only thing that stayed firm with me is a sheet of metal. And he's won every single battle that he fought in. And every single person he kills, he takes his loot. So he died a very rich man, as you may think. No. He didn't have anything. He just had his sword, a horse, and a shield. His mother says, أنت خير من ألف ألف من القوم إذا ما كبت وجوه الرجال أشجاع فأنت أشجع من ليث غضا فلن يذود عن أشبال أجواد فأنت أجود من سيل غامر يسيل بين الجبال. أما الخطاب من يهدس بيجان تكوي يوزز أنتي سينا. and he began to cry he goes والله he was exactly like that. أجواد فأنت أجود من سيل غامر يسيل بين الجبال. he didn't leave anything for himself. if you are kind then you are as kind as a river stream. Flooding between the two mountains. This is Ma'na Rajula, you get me? Ma'na Rajula is to stay firm on your beliefs. These are men that were true in their oath, in the covenants, in the promise that they made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of them have died on that path, and some of them are waiting to die on that path, and they've never changed, they've never wavered, they've never switched. And there's so many stories from the Sahaba, and when you look at the seerah of the Prophet and these great men that were around him, Someone like Andrew Tate can never face you. He's not worth the turab that they step on. These are the great men that have changed history, that have changed geographies, that have changed the way the world works right now today is impacted by these men. A small group of men, 300 men in the Battle of Badr. That was that. That was the beginning of it all. Abu Ubaidah, Amr ibn Jarrah, on that day of Badr, Jala Jawlat al Asad. No one was standing in front of him. He was taking every single person out. One after the other, one after the other, one after the other. No one stood in front of him until one man steps up. And Abu Ubaidah tries to avoid him. Wherever he's going, he's following Abu Ubaidah. Abu Ubaidah goes right, he's there. And he's trying to avoid him. Abu Ubaidah does not want confrontation with this man. He was taking everyone out except he came to this man. And then he realized there's no other way but to step up to this man. He steps up with one strike. Boom. Sorry. On the floor, dead, finished. Who was this man? It was Abu Ubaidah, Amr ibn al-Jarrah's father. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كانوا آباءه. This was the verse that was specifically for Abu Ubaidah. ولو كانوا آباءهم أو أبناءهم أو إخوانهم أو عشيرتهم أولئك كتب في قلوبهم الإيمان. You're not going to find a believer that's going to ally. With somebody who fights the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. So think about the next time you want to support Andrew Tate in one of his demeaning videos of the Hijab. The feel of Islam for the sake of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. He'd be a Muslim. He's been talking about Islam for the last four or five months. Abdullah bin Saud radiallahu anhu goes, Man kana mustanna minkum fal yastanna bi man qad maat fa inna ula yu'manu al hayy min al fitna. That's another point. If you're gonna follow someone, follow someone who has died, who died on the path of Allah Azza wa Because people change. You never know. Every single person is facing fitna and any single person could change today, tomorrow, and after tomorrow. And that's a Muslim. Never mind someone who has said demeaning things about the deen of Allah Azza wa and about the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu We have to ask ourselves, why do we like certain individuals? Why do we look up to certain people? For example, a football player, you like him for his footballing abilities, his ability to keep the ball at his feet, score goals. But that can translate into other things subconsciously without you even knowing. When we were younger, Ronaldinho was the thing. Kids were, you know, doing the night, taking on a few players, scoring a goal, and then they do the crucifix fiction celebration and you know on to the next shop you call them out on it you're like you know what you just did you just did shirk and they're like nah nah but I don't mean it I don't believe in it it's just a celebration you have went from liking him to his footballing abilities to doing something that has caused you to disbelieve in Allah Azza wa Jal so 
Why do you like Andrew Tate? Do you like him for his money, his character, his ideologies, his fighting abilities? Why do you like him? You have to ask yourself this question. And the biggest reason why I actually even wanted to make this video was because I was going through my For You page one of the days and I'm seeing Andrew Tate speak about the coronavirus thing. And he's saying that the elites are trying to control us by making us wear masks. When you make someone wear masks, you dehumanize them, you remove their identity. The same way the men in the Middle East control their women by making them wear niqabs and dehumanize them. Wallahi, he said that. And I was shook. And then I looked at the comment section expecting the Muslims to back up. Wallahi, 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 Muslims say, commentate W. Other well, Muslims, you know what they're saying? I agree and I'm a Muslim. Niqab is cultural. It is not from my religion. A'udhu Billah. The wives of the Prophet, your mothers, wore the niqab. All of them, every single one of them. And when a sister wears a niqab, it means she is trying to get to that status. She's taking the wives of the Prophet ﷺ as her example. And you should respect her. And you should defend her. And you should defend the honor of the Prophet as well. Instead, you're siding with a kafir against the deen of Allah. So it's very dangerous territory. So I was like, you know what? I have to make this video. It's very important for the Muslim youth to know who they're taking from. To know what these people stand for. What do they represent? What's their mentalities? What's their ideologies? This Andrew Tate guy, whoever it is, or Jordan Peterson, or I don't know. There's so many. The Muslim youth have been infatuated by. And then... They do a little switcheroo, they do a little uno reverse and then they get sad. These are all religions. Blue pill, this is a blue pill or red pill. Andrew Tate is pretty much red pill. Red pill, yeah. Feminism, these are all different religions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The religion of Allah has been perfected. There's nothing missing from it. And let's say, if these individuals were perfect and they were generous and they did X, Y, Z they are still missing the key component is the Tawheed of La Ilaha Illallah believing that there is no God but Allah that is the most important component that is the reason why someone is successful or not successful in this life and the next Wallahi because in the end of the day Tranquility is found by the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala these people they chase money all their life and there's emptiness in their hearts you have a gift you have a ni'mah that you do not know Wallahi Wallahi Wallahi, this gift of Islam, you should be thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single day and having gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this gift of the deen of Allah azza wa jal. And Uday ibn Hatim al Ta'i asked his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about his father. Hatim al Ta'i came at before the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was known for his generosity. People would say this guy is the definition of generosity. Actually, if you are very generous, they say that this person is even more generous than Hatim al Ta'i. Yudhra bihi al Mithal. And Uday ibn Hatim al Ta'i asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about his father. And he goes, Thaka rajulun arada shay'in fa'idraka. This is a man who wanted something and he gained it. He got it. What did he want? He wanted to be mentioned. He wanted to be remembered for his generosity. People mentioned him and that's lived on. And that's why on the Day of Judgment, the first three people, one of them gives money in charity. Why? Because it wasn't for the sake of Allah. So, he wanted something in this world. You know, like that man that's going to say, Ya Allah, why would I go into hell for? I gave in charity. You gave so it can be said. That you're generous. And it was said. That's it. You didn't do it for the sake of Allah. So no matter what, the muwahid, the fact that he's doing anything for the sake of Allah is still better than someone who is just doing it for himself because there's always a self gain. What can I gain from this? I'm going to give charity because of this. I'm going to do this because of this. A worldly gain. My benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and you are a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will be rewarded. If you've disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's the point? Why? Because they're going to come. And Allah says, It's all gone. One group, they worked, they had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their minds and in their intentions and they seeked the pleasure of the one who created them and created the universe. And others, when they did something, they seek the pleasure of themselves and the people and their own worldly benefit and gain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا عَبْدٌ مُؤْمِنٌ خَيْرٌ مِّن مُشْرِكٍ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكُمْ You might have a liking towards them in your heart. You might like what they do. You might like their drawings. You might like, I know, their creativity and their whatever it is. وَلَا عَبْدٌ مُؤْمِنٌ خَيْرٌ مِّن مُشْرِكٍ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكُمْ So, I'm still waiting for my mom to finish hijab shopping. <laughs> Bro, this is like a whole day ordeal. I'm just chilling. And um, I hope you got some benefit from this video. And, you know, 
make sure to like the video make sure to subscribe if you're new and uh, maybe I should do a bit more of these uh, talking videos I don't know how this will turn out I don't know if I post it because I haven't listened to the quality yet of the audio if it's poor then I probably won't use it but uh, yeah I kept myself entertained anyways Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh